Here is your African true story. On today's series, we will look into Britain's shameful and brutal colonial legacy in Africa. As the death of Queen Elizabeth II prompted an outpouring of grief from millions across the world, it also received criticism of her legacy, highlighting the complicated feelings of those who saw her as a symbol of the British colonial empire, an institution that enriched itself through violence, theft, and oppression. While Elizabeth ruled as Britain's nav navigated a post-colonial era, she still bore a connection to its colonial past, which was rooted in racism, plunder, exploitation, violence, and genocide against Africans, Caribbeans, and Asian colonies. There have been growing calls in recent years for the monarchy to confront its colonial past. Colonialism began as a result of change in the mode of production in Europe. The Industrial Revolution ushered in a new process of production in place of the earlier slave-based economy. The Industrial Revolution was a revolutionary trend in the history of mankind. The problem of how to lubricate machineries came up with the emergence of the Industrial Revolution. The slave trade and slavery have by this time fulfilled their basic function of providing the primitive capital. The quest for investment of the accumulated capital and the need for raw materials led to the colonization of Africa. British imperialism had a huge impact on the lives of Africans. The economic policies destroyed the colonies rather than helped them. Africa was damaged economically, politically, and culturally. The British had no interest in traditional African culture and had no concerns for the Africans either. Britain took over much of Africans' land for their own personal or commercial use, like mining or commercial farms, using violence, forced eviction, and massacres to achieve their goals. Once the British began creating farms and mining companies in Africa, they needed people to work on them, so they started using Africans as cheap labor. Africans who lived in the areas either lost their land to the British or were unable to live off their land. They moved to towns, farms or mines and started working with the colonizer. Working conditions were terrible with corporal punishment and low wages. The British needed money to run their overseas government and services for settlers, settler communities. Mother countries usually provided little to their colony, so colonial government began taxing local Africans. This especially became a problem after World War II when Britain was financially devastated. The British began taking advantage of Africans, forcing them to work to pay their taxes without giving them any other compensation. Forced labor increased and many Africans were separated from their families since only men were used to work on farms and mines. African villages lost their manpower for food production, leading to famine. Traditional African villages started to decline and the British started employing Asian immigrants creating tensions between the Asians and Africans. The economic structure of African society was changed by colonialists as cash crops were introduced to meet industrial needs of the British. Cocoa, coffee, tea, and cotton were the main cash crop produced on a large scale. Several minerals were mined extensively. The problem with this was cash crops were focused on exportation instead of food for basic needs, leading to famine among many Africans. Colonialists changed the African economy from a model of producing food for need to mainly the production of cash crops. All crops produced by Africans were exported and prices were set by the colonies. Africans were not allowed to grow these cash crops to benefit themselves. Trade was prohibited between Africans, so they were forced to export all cash crops produced and mineral mined. Britain did not plan to industrialize nor modernize Africa. Africans were used to solely produce raw materials, export them, and then re-export them to Africa as a final product sold at, at high prices. Africans could not afford to pay for these products. The British were very notorious when it came to plundering thousands of cultural artifacts, precious stones, and jewels, with the most controversial including the late Queen Elizabeth II clear-cut diamond known as the Great Star of Africa. The 530-carat gem was mined in South Africa 
back in 1905. It was stolen from South Africa and has an estimated worth of $400 million. The empire also contributed to resource depletion, labor exploitation, unfair taxation, lack of industrialization, dependence on cash crop economy, prohibition of trade, the breaking up of traditional African society and values, lack of political development, and ethnic rivals inside countries. As Britain declares a week of national mourning, there were mixed feelings in former British colonies around the world. In Africa, many have retained anger at British colonial times and recalled things like the brutal 1950 crashing of the Kenyan Maumau Rebellion as the sun set on the British Empire and the huge diamond the British royal family acquired from colonial South Africa in 1905, which the Queen never returned despite calls to do so, nor did she take responsibility nor apologize for the atrocities and plunder committed by the Empire before her death. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, follow, share, and like our video. It's the best way of supporting us. And remember, Africa is watching.